Hello, welcome to Exclusive. I'm David Puente. I'm standing in front of a little known piece of history. This is the house at 155 West 82nd Street in Manhattan where Fidel Castro lived when he was only 22. Few journalists have spent as much time with Cuba's mysterious leader as Barbara Walters has. On today's Exclusiva, Barbara Walters talks to us about her personal relationship with Fidel Castro and about what are now considered their historic interviews. Barbara, thank you very much for allowing us to come into your office where you've worked on so many interviews and two historic interviews with Fidel Castro. How difficult was he as an interview subject? Fidel Castro may be the most difficult person to interview. And it is interesting that a simple question, like, are you married, it's not very complicated, causes such an uproar. The first interview I did with Castro went on for something like three and a half hours. It ended at uh, 1.32 in the morning. He spent the entire interview blowing cigar smoke in my face. Um, I laugh about it today, but in both the interviews, the one in 1977 and then when I went back again, um, he just talks and talks and talks. He's known for this. Maybe. Castro also likes to do his interviews very late at night. He's, he is a night person or an early morning person. So while you're exhausted, he's just getting started. That 1977 interview is a classic. It, it made history because for the first time it showed Fidel Castro as a, as a human being, the man behind the uniform. It was an amazing interview for me because we spent so much time together. He picked me up in his Jeep at the hotel that I was staying at. The few tourists who were there were absolutely flabbergasted, so was I. So it was an extraordinary time to get to know the men on a personal level, but also for us to see what he was like. And Castro was many things. He was funny, he was tough, he was sensitive. It seems that the concept of freedom is the point where both of you disagree most. Well, Castro does not feel that freedom is important. Um, and his idea of democracy is, is hardly our idea. And it's something we should think about when we speak about the different countries. Barbara. We do not have your same conceptions. Our concept of freedom of the press is not yours. And I say this very honestly. I have nothing to hide. If you ask us if a paper could appear here against socialism, I could say honestly, no, it cannot appear. It would not be allowed by the government, the government, nor the people. Okay. In that sense, we do not have the freedom of the press that you possess in the U.S. And we are very satisfied about that. And there is no scandal like what takes place in the U.S., nor do we have commercial propaganda that you have in the U.S. None of that. Our mass media serve the revolution. You had a, a, a great connection with him. I mean, you were able to reprimand him, you asked him questions, but there was also laughter, uh, there was flattery. Describe that connection. Well, people thought that we were flirting with each other. We really weren't, I don't think. But I do think that it mattered that it was a female and a male. I do think, in looking back, that he reacted to that. Uh, he did not speak English, so we had a communications barrier. We just kind of got through to each other, and he made the decision that he was going to spend a good deal of time with me uh, to take us around the country. We spent so much time together that we were able, off camera and on, to laugh and, and joke. In our first interview, uh, Castro was in his uniform the whole time. Uh, during the interview, during the time that we traveled, um, when he took me to a school, etc. The second time we did the interview in 2002, he did the interview in a business suit. And that's because he was trying to, I think, convince Congress that we should have more trade with him or that the sanctions should be lifted. He also wasn't smoking the second time. He gave up smoking his Cohiba uh, cigars uh, sometime after we had uh, done our interview and he really was a chain smoker so that was a very big deal. You know in 2002 you ask him why are you wearing a suit? Yeah. Why aren't you wearing a uniform? He said to seduce you. Barbara precisely in order to seduce you and for you to be kind to me, to have pity on me. Huh, I don't remember that. I do remember that when I met him because 
you know, it really was very sort of, oh, almost nostalgic to meet him because we had spent all that time together. And I've done interviews with world leaders more than once, but this was done after so many years, and I felt a little emotional about it. And uh, we didn't exactly hug each other, but we greeted each other. You look very well, a little more gray. Ustedes se ven muy bien, un poquito más de cara, quizá. Bueno. I'm a little more blonde. When we finished the interview, he wrote on the on the back of my questions, I am in your hands now, uh, and I will see you again in 25 years. And I thought, not very likely. The fact that Fidel Castro has done so few interviews makes Barbara Walters' work in Cuba an even more fascinating personal and historical document. So when we come back, a look at Fidel Castro's most guarded personal secret. Barbara Walters asks about his wife and children, plus a historic crossing at the Bay of Pigs. We'll be right back. In 2002, um, and I know because I was part of the team that helped produce that interview and went to Cuba, there was fierce competition. Mm -hmm. But Fidel finally said, I will only speak to Barbara Walters. I think the second interview is based in part by our memory of that first interview, which was, I think, for both of us, uh, Castro and myself, an extraordinary time because we did spend a great deal of time together. We had a personal as well as a professional relationship, but it took 25 years to get another interview. Looking around your office, we see two things on your wall. One is a picture of Fidel Castro on a calendar. The other is of my daughter. Well, actually three. One is Fidel Castro, the second is my daughter, and the third is my dog. Now, why I have Fidel Castro up there, I'm not really sure. It was done in 2002. I bought the calendar there, and I guess it, it was so rare to find Castro's picture in anything down there that I put it up. I haven't a clue why it's still there. Why do you think he's so private about being married? That got him so riled up. Both times I talked about whether or not he was married, um, and he doesn't like it. He hates personal questions. What is the importance of my being married or not? And who cares whether I'm married or not? These are totally my problems. They do not belong to the international public opinion. They belong to me. I can tell you the following. I am a man that is totally free and that owns my, my own life. The rest is detail, untranscendental details that have nothing to do with the revolution nor politics. Uh -huh. But also, yeah. you know, we have, you, Pero, you know the expression. Si es, it is as if I would ask you if you have a boyfriend, if you are, do not have a boyfriend, if you're in love, if you're not in love. If I were of very great interest, there would be si some people who might be interested. In a personal conversation between us two, we can talk about that. But why do we have to talk about this for the large public? I think he wants to be this mythical figure. Um, I do hear now in the 2002 interview, I heard that he was married and that he had children or grandchildren who were triplets. And I asked him about this. Yeah. Mr. President, Senor President, President Castro, Castro, will you no. indulge me in one personal question? Because we are talking about children. Are you going to give me a test? No, 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 no test. No test. No, no test. No test. Go on, ask your question. We are talking about children. And I know you are a very private man. But we hear that you have five wonderful sons. It's prohibited to go into my personal life. Grandchildren. It's not our way. Great grandchildren. And even a I, Yes, we have descendants and all that, but that's absolutely out of the question. It's my private life. I tried. My human right. I tried. It's my human right. I cling to my human right to defend my privacy. I care of the reporter's right to ask the question. Claro. Of course. And it is my human right to say no. <laughs> I think there is this feeling that if you know too much about him personally, he will no longer be the, the, uh, uh, the, the mythical uh, uh, picture of the commandante. I am your leader, I am your soldier, I am your liberator. You don't have to know about my personal life. And very few people do. What would you say is the most memorable 
Fidel Castro interview moment for Barbara Walters? I think crossing the Bay of Pigs. Um, it was the only time in the interview that he really spoke a little English. I asked him if he felt funny crossing with me. Do you feel funny crossing the Bay of Pigs with an American? With friends, American. With friend, America. American. With American friend, it's yes. A friendship relation. It's a friendly relation. Well, it's a very. You, you didn't come here to invade the country. No, we did not you come here to invade. You came to work and, and to know Cuba. I had this this enormous sense of, of, of history and and of feeling very um, humble that I was crossing the Bay of Pigs where where people had died and and where it was such a a difficult period between our two countries. One of the most amazing things he said in two thousand two when I asked if he thought of resigning was, how can I resign? The people want me, and they will consider me a traitor. You will stay in charge until you are gone? You should understand that this is not up to me, Barbara. Whether I stay in charge or not, it is not up to me. I would have to ask for our people's permission. They could consider consider that treason. You know, I have the experience of so many years, and they value that, Barbara. What do you think his legacy will be? Well, he liberated the country. Um, for better or for worse, he did. Um, and that will not change. He brought communism to Cuba, for better or for worse. Um, and also, when you think of the charismatic leaders. You know, you can talk about Anwar Sadat and Margaret Thatcher um, and Charles de Gaulle and Fidel Castro. He is the last of the... Charismatic is the only word that I can use, and he still is. He is still a source of fascination and he continues to generate controversy. Right now, everyone wants to know about his health and about the future of Cuba. We've gotten to know the man behind the uniform a little bit better through these historical interviews. And for that, we extend our gratitude to Barbara Walters. I'm David Puente in New York for Exclusiva. Until next week, thank you for watching.